Welcome to the ITDVDs.com YouTube channel. This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. If you would like to see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Now let's begin the sample. Even though the Active Directory data store is a single file, it actually has logical partitions. And inside those partitions, certain data is held depending on the partition type. And also, depending on the partition type, that determines whether or not that data gets replicated to another domain controller's Active Directory data store. The first Active Directory data store partition we're going to talk about is going to be the domain directory partition. And inside this partition is going to hold all of the user account information, computer account information, group information. Basically, anything you can see in Active Directory users and computers is going to be held in the domain directory partition. And this partition is automatically replicated to all other domain controllers in the domain. But it's specific to a domain. So let's say I have an itdbds.local domain and also a corp.com domain in my forest. This partition would only be replicated to domain controllers that are part of the itdvds.local domain. It would not be replicated to domain controllers that are part of that corp.com domain. And because this partition holds all of the user account information, computer account information, it is necessary to be able to authenticate a user. And it's basically why a user couldn't authenticate in a different domain if a domain controller wasn't available in the domain that the account comes from. So if I'm a member of the itdbds.local domain, I try to authenticate in the corp.com domain, it's actually going to send a referral over to a domain controller in the itdbds.local domain for that authentication. And if that domain controller is not available, then I won't be able to authenticate. The next partition is going to be the configuration partition. And this partition contains configuration information for the entire forest. So things like site or site links, replication connections, they're all stored in this configuration partition. And this is replicated to every domain controller in the forest. And it's the same for every domain controller in the forest. So, for example, a domain controller in the itdvds.local domain will have this configuration partition. And a domain controller in the corp.com domain would have this configuration partition and they would be the same. Also every domain controller has a writable copy so I can make a change that affects this particular partition on any domain controller and it will just be replicated to all of the other domain controllers so that this partition is the same. The next partition is the schema directory partition and this holds the Active Directory schema and again the Active Directory schema describes all of the objects in Active Directory. So a user has a password, has a first name field, last name field. All that is described in the Active Directory schema. So when we go to create a new user, it has a first name, last name, password, and all of the many, many other attributes that a user has, as well as all other objects in Active Directory, like computers. The schema partition is also replicated to every domain controller in the forest, and it's the same. But there is a difference between this partition and the configuration partition in that only one domain controller has a writable copy of the schema directory partition. And that's the schema master. And that's why when we go to do things like extend the schema, let's say with Exchange, Microsoft Exchange, we have to do it while we're on or connected to the schema master so that we can alter the schema, which in effect alters the schema directory partition. The next partition is going to be the global catalog partition and this is going to be on any domain controller in your force that is a global catalog server. And the global catalog is actually what allows us to search from one domain for let's say a user account in other domains by just typing the name. So let's say I've got a user named uh, Ryan Jackson and that user is in a different domain than I am. I can actually do a search for Ryan Jackson from my domain and it will look up at a domain controller that's a global catalog server, Ryan Jackson, and it will be able to find it in a different domain. If we didn't have the global catalog, 
then we would actually have to specify the domain with the user account to be able to search for it. And this also makes searches a lot faster because they can happen on our local domain controller and we don't have to be referred over to another domain controller that's part of the domain we're trying to search in in order to search it. Now not everything is replicated to a global catalog partition. And actually in the Active Directory schema, each attribute has a Boolean value. And if you're not familiar with a Boolean, it's just a one or a zero or a true or a false. And it has a is member of partial attribute set Boolean that's either true or false. And if it's true, it's replicated to the global catalog. If it's false, it's not. So this way we can keep our global catalog, you know, not as big as it would be if we replicated every single attribute to it. Because a lot of times we don't want to search everything. We just want to search maybe first name, last name, you know, username, things like that. One thing to note about the global catalog par partition is that it's actually read-only on all of the domain controllers that are global catalog servers. Uh, we don't modify it in any way. It's completely handled by Active Directory. And the last partition is going to be application directory partitions. And notice there's an S here because we can actually have multiple application directory partitions. And this is used to store application-specific information. So we can actually have applications that store information in Active Directory in these application directory partitions. An excellent example of that is DNS. When we create our first Active Directory domain controller and... By default, no application directory partitions are installed, but when we check the box to install DNS, it actually creates a couple application directory partitions for us and stores the Active Directory integrated zones in these partitions. So real quick, let's take a look at these partitions. I'm on one of my domain controllers, and I'm just going to launch ADSI Edit. And I'll go ahead and just type it in, click on it. And I'm going to right click on ADSI Edit, click on Connect To. And down here under Select a well known naming context, I'm going to select Configuration. Click OK. I'll go ahead and highlight it, expand it out, expand out Configuration, and highlight Partitions. We can see here are all the partitions that we just talked about. This one's the Domain Directory Partition, here's the Schema Partition the configuration partition and we can see when we install DNS we actually have two application partitions here domain DNS zones and forest DNS zones and a couple things to note about the application partitions is that they can store any Active Directory object in them except security principles and security principles are basically anything that can be authenticated like user accounts computer accounts or uh, you know process that's running under a user account so it can't hold anything like that but any other Active Directory object and also with application partitions we can control what domain controllers they're replicated to and we'll talk about that later on